Unifria top 10 tips. First of all, if you bought a Unifria, well done. You're gonna have a lot of fun. But like anything, to be able to get the full potential, you need to know how to use it properly. Because with great power comes great responsibility. So in order to help you in that journey, I decided to put together my top 10 tips to help you get the maximum out of your Unifria. So let's start with tip number one, lightening it up. I find that the best way to lighten up the Fria is to use a couple of fire starters. Use natural ones that will not make any smells come out of it. Sort of like those paraffin ones, yeah, they're just crappy. And then add some of those oak pellets. You can, of course, buy the uni ones, but they're quite expensive. So my suggestion is just buy some good quality oak pellets somewhere else. You'll save some money and it won't really make any difference whatsoever. Don't put too many. Make sure that they are fully lit up before you go and fill up your hopper. And by the way, with the hopper, you need to be careful. I never had these issues myself, but many people complain that the pellets get stuck sometimes. So just have a stick by your side to you know, push them down when you want. But the key here is that they need to be fully lit up before you add more pellets. Because if you add them too early, well, it would just kill the fire and you have to start all the way from scratch. And that's just a big waste of time. Tip number two, is the pellet the freer you wanted or did you want gas? Because when it comes to the pellets, unlike the gas, although better than the wood, there is still quite a bit of maintenance. The hopper is very handy and you can cook a few pizzas with a full hopper, but you need to make sure that the hopper is filled up and there is a little bit more maintenance versus a gas oven, which just has a dial for, you know, on, off, um, high, low. And sometimes if you're cooking for many people or you've got a lot of things on your hand, the gas is a little bit more convenient. So if you're the kind of guy that likes to be around your oven, then by all means, Fria, very good. Also the Karu for the wood, also very good. But if you're not, then a gas option is probably the best thing for you. Tip number three, here we're talking about safety. Watch out for the back flame. The oven is constructed in a way that once you open the forward latch, if there is quite a bit of wind, then you have a suction effect. And what happens is that smoke for sure, and sometimes even flames come out from the back. And that can be quite dangerous, especially if you have little kids running around your pizza as you're making it. So watch out and make sure that once you open the front hatch, there is nobody or anything that can burn just right behind your Unifria. And tip number four, let's talk about the chimney. So the uni ovens all have this little lever that allows to close or open the chimney. And while they tell you that you can control the temperature by using that lever, my experience is that it's kind of fidgety and it's really much not precise. So my advice to you is to just leave it on. At the end of the day, you want the fire to go as hot as possible to cook that perfect pizza in 90 seconds. You don't want to bring it down. Tip number five, let's talk about the stone and the stone temperature you need for cooking pizzas. We all know that the stone is the most important part of the oven because if you want to make a perfect pizza in only 90 seconds, the stone needs to be super, super, super hot. Actually, it needs to be in excess of 400 degrees Celsius, ideally 450. Now in the Unifria, the stone is a little bit thinner than some of the higher end models, which means Two things. One that you can get to temperature a little bit quicker, which is a good thing. But the bad thing is that once you put the pizza in, the pizza extracts the temperature from the pizza stone and actually cools the stone down. Which means that once the pizza is ready, if you want to add a second pizza right afterwards, you will find that the stone has dropped quite a bit of temperature. So you need to bring it back up again. And that takes some time. So with the Unifria, there really is quite a bit of lag, probably five minutes or so between finishing one pizza and starting the next one. So again, bear in mind, especially if you are planning to make many, many pizzas, this five minutes interval can be a bit of a drag. Number six is more of a generic tip, is how to launch the pizza and make sure that the base is not burnt. This is one of the mistakes I was doing a lot at the beginning because you use similar flour to stretch your dough and you also put similar flour on your peel to launch it because, well, it allows it not to stick and the launching is much better. But the problem is that that semola flour, once it hits the really hot stone, it starts burning and it burns straight away. And then you get that charcoal, stinky, smelly pizza base that you don't want. So make sure that once you finish stretching your pizza, then you move the semola away because you only want to have a little bit of semola so that the launch is smooth, but any excess semola will burn. So watch out and you know, practice makes perfect. Tip number seven, how to clean the stone properly. Now, there are two thoughts about cleaning the stone. Some people remove it and you can remove it in the 
uni ovens and you can wash it with soap and scrub it. My personal opinion is that that's a bit of a waste of time. The oven goes super high and when it gets over 450 degrees Celsius, it will naturally burn any excess residue from the stone. So my advice to you is don't bother cleaning it, launch the oven, make it super hot, wait a few minutes until everything has been burnt off and just wipe away all the debris. So this way, you start always with a dirty stone, but it gets cleaned by the time you have to put your first pizza. So that's pretty handy, I think. Tip number eight, it's a bit of a technique tip, turning versus square peel. Now, square peel is a little bit easier because you throw the pizza with the square peel, then you take it out, turn it with your hand, throw it back in, etc., etc., etc. But doing that has two downsides. First of all, well, you can burn your fingers turning the pizza up that, that many times. And secondly, by taking the pizza out, you're kind of slowing down the cooking because you're bringing it to room temperature. So turning peel is a great little tool to learn how to use so that the pizza remains in the oven and you keep turning it so it doesn't burn on one side. And it's kind of the more professional way of making your pizzas. Tip number nine is cleaning and maintenance. Nobody likes to clean. Um, some people do like to maintain, I don't know. But anyway, the cleaning and maintenance of the Fria is actually pretty easy because like I said, the stone gets cleaned by itself and then anything else, I just wipe it with a natural detergent every few pizza making sessions. And then when I store it for the winter, I will probably do a much thorough clean with, with a hose and water and I will clean everything of the pizza oven before storing it away. I think the important thing to bear in mind here is that you don't want any rust to form. So when you're using a lot of water, make sure everything is perfectly dry before you store it. Tip number 10 is cooking condition. Can you cook in cold? Can you cook with windy weather? Now, the Uni Fria is actually the more susceptible to this because it's the lower range of the Uni oven. So the materials are a little bit less, um, not high quality, but I would say minimalistic. So it's a lot more susceptible to temperature. When it's cold outside, you will see that bringing it to really high temperature takes longer and it's harder to maintain. And also, wind is a big problem. With this oven, when there is a lot of wind, I feel that it blows out the flame quite easily. It also creates a lot of the back smoke that we were discussing earlier. And overall, the cooking experience become quite challenging. So this oven is one that is perfect when it's a nice weather outside. I would probably not bother too much unless you have an absolute craving for pizza if it's cold outside and if it's very windy. I mean, just make yourself a plate of pasta. So I hope these 10 tips have been useful and have been useful to make the best pizza you can with your Uni Fria. You can also find reviews of other Uni ovens and rockworks on my page, so go check it out. Ciao.